Jesus Revolution, amazing movie. Amazing movie. It's either going to be number two or number three in the box office, I believe. But what always happens when the character that's played by Jonathan Romy is talked about, Lonnie Frisbee, is that one or two extremes has happened historically. One extreme is that they try to kind of mm, downplay his contribution to the Jesus Revolution. The other extreme is a certain community likes to take his story and his struggles, and I would say appropriate them as if he's some sort of LGTV poster child for Christianity. And I think both are wrong. I think rewriting the history books or not talking about him is foul, and I think trying to make him some sort of poster child is also wrong. Lonnie Frisbee is played by Jonathan Romy, complicated guy, super charismatic. People say there was healings and who knows what was happening after he left Calvary Chapel, why he was at Calvary Chapel, when he came back to Calvary Chapel, when he went on to do the vineyard, all of these different things. Someone named John uh, Rutke, I think that's how you say his name, he has a YouTube called Jesus Movement, and he actually references my interview with Pastor Greg Laurie at the beginning of this video. It's a pretty long video. I encourage you guys to watch all of it, okay? And it talks about the entire process of this Jesus revolution and then other revivals that happened after that and just kind of his relationship with Lonnie and his uh, being roommates with him and all this sort of stuff, right? And so he was there with Lonnie towards the end. He uh, recorded his audio books uh, where she transcribed his life and he was his best friend. They were roommates for a while. And so this gentleman also has a ministry, also has a YouTube channel, Jonathan Rutke, I think is how you say his name. And so he read something from Lonnie's book about this exact topic, which in my opinion, kind of sets the record straight on where Lonnie was with this specifically and how this shouldn't be appropriated. And that's what you'll see as you're reading the reviews, as you're seeing people talk about it, you'll see this issue and say, well, what about this? Why didn't they talk about this? As if this is the only thing that defined Lonnie. And this is, people always do that, by the way. People in certain pockets will always conflate someone's orientation with their identity. How, how What's things someone may have dealt with or struggled with with their identity, right? And it's, it's unfortunate because if you're a Christian, your identity is in Jesus, first and foremost, right? When people get in touch with their mortality, it often drives them to God. As I've revealed to you, unless a total miracle happens, I'm probably going to die from the very cruel disease. So that's him on his deathbed, and he's just being sober about what's about to happen, and that unless a miracle happens, he's, 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 he's gonna pass. So since my cruel disease of being HIV positive, with the incurable prospect of AIDS virus taking my life, it has impacted every area of my life, and especially my emotions. And see, I didn't know anything about this. You know, he, sh he shared this really two years before he died. And by that time, he's heading into the AIDS section of that. So even his best friend here, his roommate, didn't know all the particulars about his health complications, okay? And if you didn't know about Lonnie, what basically happened is he backslid. Apparently, some would say he would party on the weekends and then preach on Sundays. And he was, you know, he had a lot of issues that he was dealing with. And so this is something that, again, is going to be appropriated by certain people in the community, especially as this movie, you know, Grange Traction, more people talk about it. You'll hear, you'll see little jabs at this in a review. This ongoing process has prompted me to somewhat address the subject of a gay lifestyle. This so this is interesting. So he, here he is addressing this head on. You know, homosexuality is a huge subject in itself, which I briefly address in the last segment of my life story. I said it was a counterfeit. That's what Lonnie said. But I would like to go into a subject a little more at this time. I do not consider myself to be an expert in any way, but I have my personal experiences and have looked into the subject from several angles. For me, of course, the most important angle is what does God say about homosexuality? Well, God is not negligent about condemning all categories of sin and harmful choices that we make. And there is a long list that he warns us about, including the so-called gay lifestyle. In case you might not have read the Great Commission, which I, I stated, I never lived the gay lifestyle. So, Pastor Greg said he didn't know nothing about this. My friend Pastor Don, who knew Lonnie, personally said he knew nothing about this. John said he knew nothing about this. And here he is saying, I didn't live this lifestyle. He seemingly dabbled with it, though. It's interesting that, that this is, he's saying this on his deathbed. He has nothing to hide at this point. Okay, this is Lonnie's words. 
I would like to add that I've never even considered myself a homosexual at all. Even though I had been molested for years as a child, mm. had sexually experimented as part of the rebellious free love generation during the teenage years in the 60s. There is also my disappointing backsliding days in the mid-80s. And So he said he backslid in the mid-80s. That's, that's what he's saying there. I have described that I have described in this book. Listen, one of the things that I loved about Monty, and really what I love about the hippies, is we're very authentic, man. Very truthful, very authentic, very real about things. And that, that's what I liked about Lonnie. Lonnie was, everything was on his sleeve. Hmm. Man. And he goes on, he says, but I must say that I have respect for many of my friends who have chosen the gay lifestyle. They're among some of the most gifted, talented, and loving individuals in the world. Being an artist and being part of the entertainment world, when, when I was a teenage cash member of Shebang, weekly TV show, I met so many creative, interesting, and famous people. Many were gay. Most were still in the closet at the time. Mm. I can honestly say that I love my gay friends, but there is a huge difference between love and approval. Wow. Ain't that the truth? And isn't that foreshadowing a lot of the, in the, the, the tensions that we're having now? Hey, I love you. I think you should be treated with dignity. I don't think you should be attacked. I don't think you should be mistreated. I don't think you should um, have someone bully you or pick on you. However, I'm not going to approve or affirm this physical act that happens. This conversation is happening right now. This conversation is relevant more than ever. He wrote this, 19, I think this was written 1992, 1993. That's when he passed away. Fascinating, isn't it? Real quick, before we come back to this, I got to show you guys something crazy. Hey, you want to see something crazy? Over 51% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. And the ones that are subscribed, only 10% have their bell notification on. So do me a favor. Please hit that subscribe button. Turn the bell notification on so you don't miss anything we have going here. All right? I appreciate you. And the idea of, of, of come as you are, you're welcome. We love you. Yet, we don't affirm anyone of whatever act that is outside of the prescriptions of scripture whether that's the dude that wants to sleep with his girlfriend whether that's the dude that wants to sleep with multiple girls whether that's the dude that wants to i always joke about this my buddy who uh would what his way of manual emission was to grind on a carpet with basketball shorts and that is how he would release right there's no verse about that we just we have a, a christian sex ethic and a, a new testament virtue about these things we'd say oh yeah all, you know, all that's out all of it's out. In fact, I love all of my friends, Christian, non-Christian, black, white, gay, straight, young, old. But I also know from experience that people's choices can lead them down a totally destructive path. Mm. God is clear in the Bible that the wages of sin is death. He said people's choices lead them down a destructive path. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That one verse is among many that clearly declares a love and severity of God. Mm -hmm. He warns us that all sins, little or big, which can range from lying and gossiping to adultery and murder, along with anything in between, can have immediate to eternal consequences. Mm -hmm. I am totally forgiven by my Lord, but I'm also paying the consequences of my sin. Wow. Totally forgiven, but I'm paying the consequences. Even right now. Okay, this is, this is somebody on a deathbed confession. This is my friend, Lonnie, being very honest and very open about all of these things. Let me go on. If you see your rambunctious three-year-old who somehow escaped a watchful eye and is ready to run out in a busy street, you would run to the rescue out of love, but also discipline him and try to explain the danger. Sometimes God severely disciplines us when we stubbornly choose to do our own thing and we ignore. And by the way, anyone that's ever had kids will tell you that kids, I'd say up until the age of four or five, the vast majority of the the, the, the responsibilities, you're just trying to help them not hurt themselves. <laughs> Christians, as baby Christians, a lot of times it's the same way. God's just trying to keep you from hurting yourself, man. You know, it's in your best interest to live God's ways. All the warnings. At the same time, to complicate things more, we're in the middle of a total cosmic war between good and evil, mm. between God and Satan, for the souls of mankind. Mm. You need to know up front that God is going to win this war, even though the devil shoots real bullets, and we'll take a great number of people along with them, and, and it's a very real hell. As a child, I was starving for affection. My natural father beat me and left. My Sheesh. stepfather raised me in cruel rejections. Mm. 
Then I was eight. A male babysitter showed me so much attention and kindness, playing games with me with fun and laughter. He often had me sit on his lap while he stroked my hair. But one day he took me in the shower and molested me. Jeez. That was the beginning of a nightmare in my life that I cannot fully express. The babysitter was a dark evangelist. Sent by demonic forces to ruin my life two weeks after I became a Christian as a child. You know, I feel a sense of destiny around this. I feel sovereign peace and I believe that Rich Bueller, Rich Bueller was a man back in that time period that was helping Lonnie process this stuff. Because there was not many people that were helping people from victimizations and things like that. It just wasn't around. Mm. People didn't know how to deal with it. Um, so this is from Lonnie's three-part autobiography um, that, that he wrote. Rich Bueller was used by God to bring a major breakthrough in my life. I pray you also will be able to tap into that love and power of the Holy Spirit. Last year, Rich met with me and said, Lonnie, I believe that God can use you in another major movement, and that would be with the plight of adults molested as children and who have been victimized people. Oof. They are victims who don't know how to protect themselves from other people. Sheesh. And then he goes on, he says, many people who have studied victimization say that it actually paralyzes you so that you become like a highly wrapped mummy mm -hmm. and have no ability to resist. You have no ability to have walls. The foundation of their life were cracked years ago. The kick, that This kicks in what they call a season of destruction. So like I said, I feel destiny to reveal everything. I have no reason to hold anything back that's ever happened to my life because I want to see people helped. And Rich Bueller thinks that my story will be able to reach and help a lot of people. This absolutely is the main reason why I feel my healing story needs to be told about my victimization. I suffered years of bondage in my emotions. I didn't know how to get out of what was continually coming to me, coming on me. And that particular time in the 50s, nobody had any information about victimization and nobody would ever mm. allow anybody to talk about child molestation because it was anathema in our society. The worst part about this is, if any of you guys have ever experienced this, and I have, by the way, uh, at a similar age um, as Lonnie, is that for the longest, at least in my case, I can't speak for everybody, but even when I tried to say something, it was still flipped on me and made it seem like I was the the, the bad one in, in the situation. In my case, it was older, older babysitter boys and stuff. And so um, it could just create, uh, not, I mean, not just confusion, but like the degree of shame that something like that does to someone's, mentality at such a young age and it's like my son is eight now you know and i can't imagine i can't imagine um yeah man people didn't know how to handle it they were too ashamed even to have enter into a dialogue and now we're finding that pedophiles are permeating through the american culture and it's not only with molestations of, of older men hitting on younger boys and on little children but it's also mothers molesting sons young girls by the thousands are getting violated by family members mm -hmm. neighbors teachers on and on like dylan said old men turning your daughters into whores and so this whole plight of you know fathers daughters mothers sons brothers sisters cousins is being uncovered in epidemic portions in our society and he goes on down a little further and he says some people are drawn into the gay lifestyle and are very conflicted having feelings of guilt and shame even when others try to convince them that it's it is normal just an alternative mm. at some point i believe many begin to believe the lie and the enemy sears their conscience now, listen to this. this is an important part of this he says sears their conscience and they embrace the lifestyle at this point and onward i see the demonic entities are controlling the direction of that life unknowing knowingly to the victim some not only embrace the lifestyle but actively willingly and creatively attempt to promote the gay agenda therefore becoming dark evangelists <laughs> I like that term wow my babysitter was definitely a dark evangelist even pedophile every pedophile in the world is a dark evangelist every hollywood scriptwriter is trying to cleverly sell homosexuality to a generation is a dark evangelist the homosexual world is being revealed for what it is a powerful counterfeit god has given me a pro prophetic gift and if i do not warn you your blood will be on your blood will be on my hands right now. Say I mean, he was talking about Hollywood and all this stuff. This is, guys, this is like 91, 92. He was saying this stuff. You know, this he, he, he was definitely seeing where things were going, it seems like. And it's so ironic that right now, if you Google some of these reviews or you Google Lonnie Frisbee, there is an entire community that attempts to weaponize him as a martyr of sorts for affirming this. That's kind of wild. 
is attempting to sell homosexuality to the whole world, not just America. He wants to destroy Christianity, the family unit, and really to destroy mankind. He's also using war, drugs, false religions, adultery, rape, and I'm almost done here, but uh, money, power, greed, every other kind of vice and deception to kill and destroy. I'm saying all this without wanting to condemn anyone, but to speak the truth in love. I'm mm -hmm. saying turn to Jesus because he's the only one who can deliver you. God has already won the war on the cross and in the empty tomb. And he goes on and he says, get an eternal perspective mm. because that's what he's getting. So I, I wanted to share that part of it. I don't think Greg had the bandwidth to do this. He's doing it. Yeah. You know, he's, he probably re has read this, but, you know, he's putting out the and this is something that me and Pastor Greg talked about in our in our interview, by the way. And, and I had talked about one of my very initial impressions of the Jesus Revolution trailer was like, whoa, are they going to talk about this? And Pastor Greg was thankfully wanting to engage in this conversation uh, because oftentimes this is uh, something that gets appropriated. This revolution movie and, you know, he stops kind of short on some of these things. But I want you to know, this is my friend Lonnie. Lonnie is the real deal. Wages of sin is death. That's what Lonnie said. That's what the scripture says. So that's what it is. You know, people fall. I mean, thank God he could get redeemed at the end. Yeah. I'm praising the Lord for that. Yeah. You know, all of us have had all kinds of issues that have hit all of our lives. And I'm thanking God. You know, the consequences of Lonnie's decisions, I mean, to cut his, short, his life short. Yep. Horrible. But at the end, God redeemed. Amen. And God restored everything. Amen. I was thanking God that was in this book. So that's a real story. Thank you for listening. Yeah, man. And, and and the crazy part is, you know, he's in a movie and his contribution is seen and um, it's pretty powerful. This dark evangelist visited him two weeks after he gave his life to Jesus when he was eight years old. And, and so my question to, to you guys is, who are the dark evangelists in your life? Who are those folks who Satan used to steal, kill, and destroy? Who, perhaps in the same way it happened to Lonnie, in the same way it happened to me, took that innocence from you and, 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 and sent you down a whirlwind and a roller coaster of confusion and maybe even patterns that were self-destructive. The beautiful part is that Jesus says, in him, there's life and life abundance. In him, there is freedom. In him, there's... And that life abundance in John 10, where he says, I've come to give life and life in abundance. He says, um, that, that word life in that context is, is zoe life. It's full life. It's abundant life. It's it's rich life. Not, not, not just monetarily and not financially, but life worth living, right? Zoe life. My, da my daughter's... Uh, name is Zoe, right? And Jesus comes to do that, right? And, and I believe Jesus can, can restore and redeem and um, transform. But but there's there's an aspect of it where, where we also have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We got to do the work, man, you know? And so Lonnie's life um, ended tragically. Um, a lot of us who have gone through similar things, man, you know, um, for whatever reason, our, our, our lives played out differently. You know, and you just never know how people are going to react to these sorts of, tra these sorts of traumas. I mean, now it's like trauma is like so romanticized and popularized and everyone has, has trauma, but you're talking about your innocence being taken from you as a child. Like that's some real stuff, you know, and, and it had long lasting implications in my life that uh, took a while to work through. But all along I was saved. You know, God, God was with me. God, God was with me, and God allowed those those things and those scars to be able to um, help and be vulnerable and put stuff together like our free uh, Master My Habits course, mastermyhabits.com, which I was able to put together with my Christian therapist, right? Um, and I think this generation wants that. I believe this generation wants to see your scars. I think we want to have a curated and perfect, polished image, but like, that's not, that's not life, man. You know, life is messy. Sin is uh, ugly. It has consequences. 
And so I'm interested in this conversation around all of this. I'm interested in this in this dialogue that could potentially be had. I'm interested in the fact that um, we don't have to allow those dark evangelists to to cut our life short. You know, we don't have to we don't have to allow that. Like, yes, bad things happen. Yes, things get taken from you, but you, we don't have to stay in that spot. And I feel like now we have more resources than ever. We're more aware of mental health. We're more aware of how habits and addictions work. There's so there's so many options now. You know, I want to hear from you guys though, man. What do you guys think? And and and, and have you addressed? And confronted those dark evangelists in your life. You know? Have you addressed and, and, and confronted those dark evangelists in your life? Have you faced them head on and dealt with some of the issues? You know, or, or you know, praise God for those of you guys that don't, um, that don't have those, that, you know, you had a great upbringing, you have parents that love you. Like, dope, continue that. Continue, continue that for your children. But don't stay in this place where you just stay stuck because you don't know the consequences of that. You don't know how far gone it, things can get, you know? If you guys want to go to Extra Mile and partner with what we're doing here, less than 1% of the people who watch this channel actually partner with us. If we got 5% of the people who watch this channel partner with us, that would literally change everything. So if you want to go to the Extra Mile, want to keep us independent so we keep answering only to you, consider partnering with us in our online community for as little as $5 a month. Exclusive access to our podcast when they come out early. These daily after-party streams released. And our Discord access. Okay, for only 5 bucks a month. Other cool perks. Why? So we don't have to take brand deals and ever make commercials like this one. Our friends at GenuCell Skincare have exciting news to celebrate in 2023. Using Manscaped during my showers after workout has given me much more confidence. And that's where mud water comes in. True Classic has got your pack. All thanks to the sponsor of today's video, SayMine.com. Established titles is your opportunity to earn the title of Laird or Lady. Objective credit approval rates range from 7.99% APR to 19.99% APR, included 0.50% auto pay discount. If you don't want us to make ads with brands you don't care about, sign up for our online community for as little as five dollars a month to keep us independent and ultimately answering to you as our boss you get all sorts of benefits like daily replays of our after party streams exclusive access to our discord community and early access to our podcast interviews all starting for only five dollars a month king stream entertainment Bruce lawn